He's got his number. He knows exactly which one he is, Anna. Look at the double ganger. Does manage to get up to the high ground, but Somnus with the buyback. He's there, ready to claim the kill. PSG LGD 2 1 up at the moment in this best of five grand finals. One game needed to secure the championship title. Opened up onto him, Ame trying to get on top of Anna. The BKB popped by Chalice, he'll get the ult out. No tail getting gone out straight away by F5 with the circle. No tail's dead for 100. If PSG LGD can find that one team fight, it could be the team fight to win TI. He gets the Hex out, but F5 with the Snowball save! They get the bash out, Somnus will be able to find the IO, but they're fully low OGD! That's Somnus there for two minutes! They get Thompson, Thompson there for two minutes, only Anna! Anna, can he do it here? He's at half health save! Take him to call! He gets the call of his lifetime! Before we get into the video, I wanted to remind you that Every Second Counts is brought to you by Cisco, powering the future of esports. All right, so OG were the last team that anyone expected to make it into the grand finals of the International 2018, literally. On top of sitting dead last in the power rankings, this once perennial powerhouse had become a broken, battered underdog after being abandoned by their captain, drafter, and figurative brother, Fly, just three months before the biggest tournament in Dota. It was a huge shock. Like, we, did, we for sure didn't see it coming. Not much was said. I think Max, three sentences were spoken in that room. Then they left. We spent eight years together and now it's over. That was how that happened. What happened next is considered the greatest story in esports, and chances are you already know it because it is. Instead of rolling over and disbanding, OG cobbled together a roster, fought their way through an open qualifier, regional qualifier, and a group stage to somehow make it into the upper bracket at the most cutthroat international ever. From there, things got even crazier. OG swept VGJ Storm and then played a close grudge match series with EG, defeating their former captain, Fly. OG had gone from underdogs who weren't even supposed to be in the tournament to prospective TI finalists. One win away from the series that every Dota pro dreams of playing, OG entered the upper bracket finals against Chinese superpower PSG LGD as extremely hopeful hopefuls. But in typical OG fashion, they went from standing on the brink of defeat to making an impossible turn. Ame still very, very low. The blast will kill him off, but buyback. LGD want this now. LGD, or can they? Back enough? No, they're not. Terrorblade, BT's forward. The ball is up. Thompson needs to defend. X Nova very visible. You've got a very, very low life Marana, but OG, they can't find the target. X Nova, he's got the grip. He's got the control. He's got the kill. Thompson is down, but ES is up. Where the echo? Slam, oh, there he is. forward, there's your slam, there's the dump, there's the play, Jirax, the savior of OG. They have a good opening to actually close out the game, but they go for the throne. LGD want this now. They basically try to win right then and there, and that was a big mistake. They weren't patient, they couldn't wait. I remember the second they buy back the TV, we started laughing about it. We're like, hey, what the hell do they think they're doing? Like, they, they actually lost. But these are the moments when, like, you're, you're so in the zone that you don't even realize that this is a game three, they might win, they might, like, it's not about that. It's like you're looking at the game and strictly the game. And yeah, for us, when our game understanding told us that this buyback was a huge mistake that we could we could punish. Jirax leaping forward, all he has to do is create space for OG to do it, to get to the grand final of TIA. Tip him up, poor tip him over. The lead comes forward, they've got the control. X Nova, he'll go down. This is the game. LGD have nothing left. OG have done it. Against all the odds, OG earned a chance to vie for the Aegis of Champions. Even crazier was the fact their Grand Finals opponent was the very same team they barely just beat, and it looked like PSG LGD wouldn't be caught off guard a second time. Or so it seemed. Pull the creep wave away. He'll zip across, but Jarax with the echo snap. The orchid comes out onto the shaker. The triumph for the jungle, but the self fuels keeps Jarax alive. He's safe. He's got Fisher trying to run. Fisher found the strike. Do they have the damage in time? They do. Oh, gee. Again and again and again in this game one. Pull 
pulling off these, these incredible plays. And G, G is cold, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, G taking game one of this best of five as they're three dead on OG. PSG LGD with a full lineup still alive as they look towards the mid lane and GG is called. Ladies and gentlemen, PSG LGD taking game two of the best of five grand finals here at TIA. Snowtail immediately dies after buying back. The Winter's Curse is there onto FY. Will it kill him off? FY is still alive. FY, he'll finally fall. The Dragon Slave for Jarex finishes him off. He'll buy back those. He knows this is LGD's chance to claim this game three. Somnus continue to be down onto the edge of the light strike comes out. The Agony was tied. That's from Arme. Keeping Somnus safe. He gets a good goal. Down into Jerry. He's looking to dive towards the fountain as OG are still able to play around it. But the damage from Sonus in goes Chalice as well with the Primus Prince. They beat down on the ancient PSG LGD looking to close this one up. And they will. Game three goes to PSG LGD. OG may have won game one, but LGD struck back with two games in a row to get to match point. Going into game four, it seemed like OG's luck had finally run out. Like they couldn't possibly have any more insane comebacks or unthinkable upsets up their sleeve. It looked like LGD was about to quickly end OG's dreams in one brutal game. LGD is going to just make them look worse because of how amazing they are. And LGD, they're warmed up, right? You know, that's, they already that's started true. to stay, they had the lower bracket, and uh, they proved that they're a team that can finish things when it has to get done early. And that's something that OG have been beating teams with. You know, if you don't close this game fast enough, we're going to get this Anna Spectre, you know, we're going to buy back on two heroes and team wipe you and suddenly we're winning. That's pretty much what's brought OG several victories throughout this winner's bracket. But in that game, with OG's back against the wall, with everything to lose, that one split second decision, one seemingly impossible play changed everything. They get Thompson, Thompson never do it, it's only Anna, Anna, can he do it here? He's at half out set! Take the call! He gets the call of his lifetime! Like all great plays, this one began long before Seb hit his infamous call. Let's break it down second by second. Any Dota fan knows that games are won and lost in the draft. And at first, it seemed like LGD might have sewn up game four before it even began. You see, Seb knew that he'd need an offlaner that could not only enable Topson's Invoker, but also buy time for Anna's Phantom Lancer to come online late game. What's more, he needed something that could bully lanes in the early to mid game and ideally shut down Ame's hard carry, Morphling. The issue is that LGD knew that too, so they banned his most viable option, Centaur, forcing Seb to rely on something a little less traditional. Uh, can't do it. They banned Centaur. They banned the Centaur. Oh, Axe might be very good actually. Or well, actually just cut waves against Ench and then Axe against the Morph. Yeah, I like yeah, it. yeah this might, might be the Axe game. Seb Axe. Yes. Shit. Yes, man. Okay. Zem, yes. Fuck, fuck, Zem. You're gonna okay, see, okay. man. You're gonna see some shit, man. What's up, man? Hey, I want to think about it. I'm a man. 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 Can they do it here? Is this the TI winning game, boys? We're seeing again OG trying something a little different. There's the Axe, another hero that people just aren't playing, but they're bringing it out here on their potential knockout game of the TIA Grand Finals. The question, of course, was whether it would pan out. In addition to being out of meta, Axe is an extremely snowbally hero. His high damage RNG activated spins make him a menace in the laning phase, but if he doesn't get off to a truly excellent start, he's essentially dead weight. Thankfully, as soon as Game 4 started, Seb came through on his promise and from the get-go just ran LGD into the ground. A lot of weight is going to be on Seb. He's had this bottom lane, he's got good levels and he's got decent farm too. He's top of the net worth this game, very close to having the Blink Dagger on top of the Ring of Health. 
But TPs are heading down. Somnus seeing if we can find the Rupture. Seb, oh, he goes to farm. That's going to give time for Somnus to close the gap. Get the Rupture. He's still pretty beefy, but is he beefy enough? I don't think so. The shards are out, trapping him in. The spin, though. The taunt. The sun strike. Seb, he, gets, he gets the dunk off. The snowball save wasn't in time. And Jerex, he's in with the tether. OG, they're turning this one around. They look to run down their fly. F5 with the snowball. The shards already used. There's no way to escape. Or maybe the Jukes. Is it enough? Oh, oh it is. Seb, he gets fogged. He can't get the dunk off. F5 I will survive. Unfortunately, the rest of OG weren't getting off to such a great start. With Tops and Anana falling behind in farm, it was up to Seb to create space and opportunities for his cores. He tries to go for Xnova, but Xnova just out of range still. The spirits hitting into him. They'll chase down. Do they have the damage to burst him? The Culling Blade just enough to bring him down, so he gets bursted by the Sunstruck. By the Primal Split, they've got the Snowball in, onto Anna, back up his inbound, Seb, he's on the side, can he look for the play, jumps in, gets the call, the Sun Strike down as well, as Anna's back in, they get the dunk off, they'll kill off FY, but now Anna and Seb, they've got to somehow get out of it, Arme, oh, into the axe form, manages to punch down Anna, Seb's in trouble too, he looks for another call off, can he get the spins, that's the question, Jarex comes in, he's giving him the regen, and the spin, gets the dunk, it. Seb, gets the second, he finds the double kill, that's the bait play, they get the call, onto the two of them, Seb jumps in, the Sun Strike's down, the Stun as well, the micro play. They've got the lockdown on to both of them. Somnus falls as well. No tail with his army of creeps. As OG, they remember up and out. Oh, Anna. On this. He's on top of Somnus. The BKB, of course, now one off, but they'll find Somnus as well. A double kill for Thompson as OG take a successful fight around the pit. They're at a 74% win probability now. But LGD weren't willing to go down without a fight. They started playing around Seb's axe, avoiding him as necessary, and little by little, that lead that OG had amassed started slipping away. And again, getting focused, Thompson tried to come into it from the side with the combo, but the snowball again from FY buying time for Summers. He lists what Seb is all. He just beats into the blade belt. Seb's able to turn and get the kill. There'll be the buyback for the Blood Seeker. Anna trying to hold still, but Chalice, he's got his number. He knows exactly which one he is, Anna. Look at the doppelganger. Does manage to get up to the high ground, but Summers with the buyback. He's there, ready to claim the kill. OG now one game away from losing in this grand finals. It looked like we had no chances. It looked like we were going to lose. It looked really bad. Those two aren't dead without Biden. They're done for 80 seconds. Pretty much back to a 50-50. PSG LGD's one game needed to secure the championship title. And they are ahead here in game four. The half hour that ensued was tense and unpredictable. Non-stop buybacks, barracks trades, and harrowing high-stakes outplays. Has the double he's, he's been ruptured. He needs help, but he needs it now. Jarek in with the tether, of the hand of God, giving that double heal. The relocate as well. Jarek gets him out. I'm trying to get these. Somebody has to death base. Oh no, you yeah, want to reload into the base? No, no, no. Memes. Bye, bye. I'm sorry. Turn, 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 you have to believe in your guts that it's not over. Because obviously everything around you is telling you it's over. That, that's twice in the series that X Nova just comes yeah. out of nowhere. Like, Crawl is cheering against you. It keeps getting harder. You know, you lost one fight, two fights. Still Anna holding on. You feel like shit. You feel like it's impossible. They really want to force this PL to come back here. Despite securing mega creeps, OG were low on buybacks, down two racks themselves, and one team wipe away from watching their Cinderella story fall just inches short of its magical conclusion. So at 60 minutes, when Ana got jumped in the mid lane, it looked over. At this stage of the game, a single team fight could decide everything. And unfortunately for OG, this team fight started out really badly for them. Very, very soon to be spawning, Roshan and PSG LGD are well aware. Roshan's up. It looks like only OG knows oh, right now. Arme and Heal battle. Anna. He's been losing, losing action. Arme's gonna get caught out by the tornado, though. They've opened up onto him, Arme, trying to get on top of Anna. The BKB popped by Chalice, he'll get the ult out. No Tail getting gone on straight away by F5 with the circle. No Tail's dead for 100. With Thompson farming jungle camps and Seb split pushing bottom, OG weren't whole at the moment the fight broke loose. This meant that No Tail had already been blown up by the time Seb TP'd, forcing him, Jerax, and Thompson to scramble as Ana staved off a 1v5. And this is where things got really bad for OG. 
In an effort to isolate Seb from his teammates, Chalice's Brulings and Ex Nova's Enchantress start diverting all their energy towards shutting him down. As soon as Somnus's Bloodseeker casts Bloodrite, an AoE silence that prevents anyone caught in it from using their spells, Seb had to move to get out of range. Except, crucially, he ran left instead of right, cutting him off from his allies, leaving him to watch as they got torn to shreds by LGD's onslaught. Looking for the cool control on Tuabe. Has he got it? Abe getting shut up by the cold snap, but he's able to wait for up the high Thompson blinks in. He gets the hex out, but f fight with a snowball save. Seb tried to re-engage with Shadow Blade, an item that renders him invisible to enemy units, but unfortunately, X Nova had a gem of true sight to counter that play, and was able to shoo him off while the rest of LGD took both Jerax and Topson out of the fight, leaving only Ana standing. They get the match out, Sonus will be able to find the IO, but they're fully low LGD. That's Sonus there for two minutes. They get Thompson, Thompson there for two minutes. Only Anna, Anna. Now, at this exact moment, everything, all of OG's hopes and dreams were on Anna's shoulders. It looked bad, but Anna had a chance. His buyback was up. His allies were going to be as well in just a few seconds, and LGD only had one buyback available, which was not enough to stop OG. If Ana could somehow swing this fight right here, right now, OG could bring this game back from the brink. The issue is that it wouldn't be easy. See, Phantom Lancer is a pretty sturdy hero thanks to his passive illusion generation but he wins fights by hitting you over and over, and he doesn't have his own crowd control to enable that. That meant Ana had no way to lock down LGD in order to actually kill them. What's more, the second Thompson went down, LGD saw red. All of their attention shifted onto focusing Ana down, which meant that for one split second, they forgot about Seb. For one moment, LGD weren't tracking his position but that was all the time he needed. They get Thompson, Thompson there for two minutes, only Anna, Anna, can he do it here? He's at half health set. Seb gets the call. He gets the call of his lifetime. It's a play so perfect, so incredibly clutch, people have knitted scarves in its honor. Seb used his blink dagger to execute a pixel perfect berserker's call onto three of LGD's remaining heroes. Now, for those who don't know, Berserker's Call is a taunt that forces anyone within its area of effect to attack Axe. Seb also took a talent at level 25 that increased its range, which gave Ana the opening he needed to rip LGD to shreds. What Sebastian said in the game was like, don't worry guys, I'm gonna carry this game. I just need some time. This is my game, boys. So here you got Odie Pixel commentating the match. When you hear a guy that normally talks super fast, just stop and shout one word. Seb! Seb gets the call! I see Seb making a play. I think about this beautiful French man and all I want to do is shout his name. Of all the outplays that made OG's run possible to begin with, the crazy upper bracket hold, Ana's cheeky buyback sell, the Yule's dodge. None embody OG's untiltable spirit more than Seb's era-defining axe call. TI8 was, it was weird, man. TI8 was like, I don't know how to describe it. It's like, it felt like we couldn't lose. For some reason, it felt like it was impossible to lose. It's like, some games, like, I don't know, we were like two sides behind, like 20, I don't even know like how bad it looked. It, it, nothing was going for us. Yet it felt like this game was fine. Like it was, it was. Sometimes it even felt like the game was easy. We were so peaceful in certain games. Like maybe we're just lunatics. I don't know. It, it felt like we were not gonna lose, and we didn't. But it wasn't only Dota. It felt like there was much more to it. Not only did OG go on to win that game, the following game, and the whole tournament, they won the next TI as well. They 
just giving look at this, they're diving fountain and TI finals. They want Karoki in the fountain as well. They're gonna get him, they're chasing Miracle as well. Oh my god, I can't believe this. I can't believe what we're seeing in this game for OG. You thought you saw it all in game two, you thought you saw it all in game two. But all of that might never have happened if it weren't for Seb's incredible call. The dynasty began in that moment, with a fateful, earth-shattering reminder that every second counts. There is always a way. There is always a way. Always. And that's why we like Dota. That's, that's the reason why we've been playing Dota so much. It's the reason why we think Dota is the best game. It's because there's always a way to break things. Like. No matter how broken it looks, no matter, no matter how powerful it looks, no matter how what the win rate is, no matter how strong the teams are with it, there's always a win. On the next episode of Every Second Counts presented by Cisco, we're going to break down the two minutes that made Edward Gaming world champions. A Viper is still alive though, flashes in, Showmaker down to 200, he's a sitting duck and it's a double kill for Scout. Now he's flashing forward, picking up all of the summoner spells and it is good night for Ghost and an ace for EDG. It's Damwon's unprecedented Baron sneak and EDG's incredible team fight from Worlds 2021. Check it out on January 12th.